I don't want people to see we're live. <laughs> we're <laughs> shut up. We we went live and you have to blow your nose. Yeah, well, you know what? It's dig, baby. Dig. It's natural, bruh. It's natural. Dig. Hit the intro and I'll be done. All right, fine. Hey, welcome everybody. This is actually just Rajan. It's the vlog about nothing and everything, but mostly nothing. I don't know if we have anything today. But you know what? I've got an intro. We can do that. We'll be right back after this. Rachel. everybody make sure that you are hitting the subscribe button and sharing the live stream out to your friends uh we are simulcasting to geek insider indie bolt comics in new jersey as well as rage and abc that's right hit the button let me drop the card here hey anita so did you finish digging oh yeah look oh, good? Queen? I, I don't know if i am i might be I don't know. It's something that I always check with my husband when we go out. I'm like, hey, and, and I'm like pointing. He goes, oh, my God, what's wrong with you? Yeah, I do that in public, too. I don't care. I'm you know good. why? Because I'd rather somebody that I trust tell me that I have a snot up my nose than walk around all day and then wonder how many people saw. And didn't that, say shit. And didn't say shit. I hate that. I Not hate me that. Too. Me, too. It's like, such a rude. Me. Yeah, tell me. Um. But that's just the way I am. In fact, the the one time though, the, people are really sensitive. The one time I uh, like I handed a person a tissue, I didn't say anything. I just handed them a tissue, and I just kind of like went like that. Mm -hmm. And then they got mad at me because you saw it. Because I saw it. I'm like, how dare you see something and point it out? And I'm like, and if they would have done that, I'd be like, hey, you had a booger hanging at you. I would have loud capped the shit out of them. No, I'm not going to do that. But it was oh, just, you know, you try to be discreet and stuff like that, and then they get mad at you. I'm like, really? It's like that. That's the last time I try to like help you, right? Like, I have no incentive now to to be truthful with you. I don't, you I, better weird. hope nothing's oozing from your orifice because I am not telling you shit. <laughs> it's like it's like somebody coming out of the bathroom with like toilet paper stuck in the back of their pants and nobody says it, you know, but you, it, but it's okay to be a laughing stock, right? <laughs> I mean, I, what is wrong with people? I don't know. Anyway, uh, I don't really have a lot to say except that I was woken up this morning about five o'clock in the morning. I was sleeping really hard. And then little by little, I was getting this migraine. Uh, and, and then finally about five o'clock, I was feeling nauseous enough and awake enough that said, screw this. And, uh, so I got up and I was up for a little bit and I was waiting for the Excedrin to kick in. So I'm feeling a little off today. Just tired. You're not on your A game? No. And my head still hurts. It's still, it's still like kind of there. So it's like one of these all day battles and it kind of sucks because yeah. I have shit to do. We do have shit to do. We always have shit to do. But honestly, like, like when I'm done with this, I'm getting away from my computer and I'm boxing up more books because that's going out in tomorrow's mail. And then fulfillment is done. Wow. I'm done with book fulfillment. And then we can focus on like our scripts. And I even thought about... I know this sounds crazy, but I even thought about getting one of those refurbished Wacom tablets. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And trying my hand at drawing a couple of things. Digitals? Digitals. Hmm. I thought about it. So fancy, Murdoch. It's that or just, you know, like the, the real quick uh, roughs. 
on how I envision some of these stories that to give to an artist to give to an artist. Right. So at least they have a heads up and stuff like that. I think right. I want to try my hand at that because I am familiar with layout, but it's more with newspapers. Oh, oh. Oh. What? What? Speaking of speaking of giving roughs, that's all the funniest post yesterday. Jim Noble posted uh -huh. this god awful stick figure holding waffles for for a freaking for for a, a rough idea or so. I don't know if he was just fucking around and it wasn't really the rough or whatever. But then Steph drew the actual picture, mm -hmm. and I don't even know in which order they did it, but it was fucking awesome. You need to totally go over there on Jim's page and look at it. Jim E. Noble, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> stick figures. Yeah, it was a stick figure holding a toaster with waffles. <laughs> that was his rough. It was like it was it was awful. And then Steph drew the sexy chick with the smiling toaster and the waffles popping out. And it it, it was great. Okay, all right. Uh, Mike Jimmy says Mike Rains are the worst. They are. It's terrible. And uh, get a Hue Hue on Hue on. Or XP Pen and Clip Studio Paint, you'll be set. Uh, Clip Studio Paint is on my radar. I'm waiting because I think twice a year they have a super sale. Yeah. We'll talk about that after. Okay. But so I'm looking into into possibly getting that. Not because I'm an artist, uh, but I think that I could definitely do like roughs and basic layout and things like that. At least I'm going to try. And if it looks like shit, Nita will tell me. Because she oh, yeah. tells me stuff like that. She's like, it's shit. Fix it. I'm like, okay. I don't say fix it like that. I'm not rude. I'm not you. I'm not like, hey, Nita, you need a break. Wow. <laughs> okay, Meredith. <laughs> okay, Meredith. Sometimes, well, okay. You know, when it comes to like being like full on honest, if you are sitting next to somebody and normally everything's like really, really cool, but the energy that's just coming off and maybe it's because of something that they're dealing with or something they're going through and stuff. And it's like, I feed off of that. I, I, um, I was even talking to Mog yesterday that um, I, ever since I was younger, I used to mimic because I didn't understand how to read a room or how to read body language and things like that. So it's always been a study because of Asperger's. So everything was kind of alien to me. And um, so when, um, when I see somebody, uh, it, here's a funny, uh, funny, like true story. Um, I was talking with somebody, it was at work and they're a fast talker anyway. So they were talking kind of fast and I started mimicking them and we were just like kind of going at it and we were really animated. And it just, I realized that I was talking so fast that I had to stop and I grabbed her and it was like, breathe for a minute. <laughs> and she's looking at me like, what's wrong? I'm like, you're talking so fast. I'm talking faster and we're a train wreck. And she just started laughing because she realized that that's exactly what we were doing. And I was just like, okay. <sighs> Now we can talk regular again. <laughs> it's almost like hit, hitting the reset button. So when I'm feeling like this energy and I'm already feeling low energy and it just felt like pulling and me Nita's down. It is working my nerves. It wasn't working my nerves. It was just, it was working the energy though. And I, and I was like, uh, I'm like, either I gotta, either I gotta go or you gotta go. <laughs> so I said, Nita, to go take a break because you were already saying I need a nap. And I was like, okay. Perfect time to do that. <laughs> hello, hello, Jody McPhee. Uh, Mike Jimmy says, you'll save the artist and yourself hours of back and forth with it because of basic layout. Um, yeah, I mean, I understand layout in, in newspaper capacity. Um, I When I think of my stories, I do see them visually. So trying to lay out my words on a page sounds like a pretty interesting challenge that I that I'm looking forward to trying but uh, yeah I'm waiting for my tax return speaking of tax return so it says approved but for whatever reason however it is that they calculated it they were like no it's gonna be twelve hundred dollars less than you thought oh well that's nice yeah wasn't that nice of them yeah Hmm. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Thank you. 
So that's like twelve hundred dollars less than I was expecting. Uh, yeah. So the the budget remains tight. Not not a lot of leeway to uh, fuck around and, and get some fun stuff. But hey, it is. It's it coming. Is. It's coming. Work's picking up for both of us. <sighs> and... Work's picking up. So there's that. Um. Hey, Nita. Yo. What do you got there? Oh, sorry. No, no. I mean, like, what is that? It's a poppet. It, it's a fidget toy. It, you know, it's cool. Is that is that better than um, bubble wrap? No, nothing beats bubble wrap. But usually it's quieter. This one just hasn't been broken yet. But it's kind of mm -hmm. cool because it does pop a little bit. But See, it, I don't it, know. I don't know if I. I don't know if I would want one of those because I have my pencils, and I, I twiddle, I twiddle, I twiddle I have, my pencils. Look, I found this one on the road. The whole trip, I was looking for one, right? Yeah. The whole ride back, I found them everywhere because I left mine at home for MegaCon, and I, I like, I fidget a lot with my hands, and so, uh, yeah. So like the whole way, like I realized I'd left it. We kept our eyes open. Didn't see them fuckers everywhere. The from the very first stop we made on the ride home mm -hmm. until we got back, e there they were everywhere. At every fucking gas station, they had them in various sizes. In fact, this one I picked up on the road. Mm -hmm. Like just, it, it, I just Ooh. I love it because I do. I fidget. I fidget constantly. I fidget when I'm thinking. I fidget. Fidget when I'm nervous. I. I just it, I do it's it's really stimming is what it is more than fidgeting. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a, it's just a self soothing thing I do. I I have my pencils. Uh, actually, I, I lost the pencil that I was working on. Where like working my way through it with my thumb. Oh, here it is. Yeah, you see all the paints missing in the middle there, and it's cut. It's really indented. You can't tell from the from the well, camera. Like, this one's been played with enough to where like I have to put it right up on the mic. Yeah, I know, right? Thanks, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's great. That is exactly what happened, Jody. Like, seriously. Then I, then I had to point it out. <laughs> right? Like, this one This one barely makes any yourself. noise at all. I can't help myself. Oh, my God. Okay, this I isn't this the... twirls his hair. You know, and it's funny. Uh, what was... Um, so with her like counting and things, I count too. And I was telling her last night. Like, we didn't even bring I, up my counting. They don't even know what I'm talking. What you're when, talking about? When I when I knit and crochet, it's kind of funny because I'll sit there and because I'll count. If I hear a pattern, I'll start counting it just to see if there is a pattern. And so, uh, but like, what's weird is when I knit or crochet, it's because I need that quiet moment. But it's not really quiet because I'm counting, except. I only count to one. I'm like one, one, one. <laughs> hey, Meredith, one. what's this going to be? I go down the, the whole row of whether I'm knitting or crocheting. It's all one. She's psychic so. too, though. Watch. <laughs> I'm going to test your psychic abilities, Meredith. Oh, no. Yeah. How many is this going to be? Oh, that's 10. <laughs> Always. <laughs> and I remember the first time I heard you and I was just like, I'm like, why are you knocking? Because I, I was listening for a while and I was and I was uh, and I was counting. I was like, okay, 10, 10, 10. And then I asked her, I said, why are you counting? And all of a sudden she went like this. Like she brought her hands up to her chest and she's like, What are you talking about? <laughs> and I'm like, the knocking. <laughs> she's like, how did you know? I was like, I have ears. <laughs> And I'm like, why 10? And she's like, I don't know. <laughs> it just seemed like a good number. One time said, for each I finger. I screw up, I have to do it over again. <laughs> but yeah, I, I count everything. I, I don't know if it's OCD or if it's Asperger's or maybe both. Well, they kind of go funny. hand in hand. Mike Jimmy says, I'll snap my fingers when I know uh, when a red light turns to green. Oh, yeah. I used to... Uh, all right, Hello? so <laughs> I used to do this. I'd be like, uh, I, my kids would be in the car and I'd be sitting there. And I said, okay, you guys ready? Count, you know, count down from three, three, two, one. And I go like that and it would turn green. 
And they were like, oh my God, how'd you do that? I'm like, magic. But they didn't realize that I saw like the time cycle. The time cycle. Yeah. <laughs> and it is three. Mm -hmm. For, yep, it's three. From yellow to red is three. Yeah, usually, unless, unless it's a timed. Uh, except for Florida. Florida's weird. You, you guys have the longest fucking red lights. Sometimes. Oh my God, it was fucking insane. Yeah. Like, I, I'm not even kidding you. There'd be some lights that were uh, five fucking minutes long. Mm -hmm. I'm like, bruh. Yeah. I think that those are just on a timer, and then some of them have that uh, that switch, you know. So, I don't know. It's weird. Let's um, talk about our shit and go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, here, let me let me drop a quick. Uh, oh, we need to do our bump here. Bumps. Yeah, we gotta drop a bump. Uh, yeah, drop which one do we want? One. Which one do we want? Miss Daphne Lage. Oh, okay. Well, Miss Daphne Lage has a campaign that will be launching very soon, and so she's got to notify me on launch button. And there is a quick link at the end of this. Stay tuned. And up next, we have Symphonic Verses. You can go to symphonicverses.com slash shop and get a free download for an introduction into this story. Uh, it is an upcoming TV series, which uh, we're really excited about. And we're waiting to get the official press release to let you guys know what the details are of that. But if you want to get into the story, the books are available. They sell out quickly. So make sure you head over to ZymphonicVersus.com slash shop and get your copies today. We also have Little Bastard Promos, where you can do some shameless self-promotion. We highly recommend that you do. There are daily prompts there to post where you are selling or crowdfunding. And, of course, you can drop in there and let people know if you are an artist and looking for commissions or a writer looking for a project. Definitely go into Little Bastard Promos and do some shameless self-promotion. Uh... Let's see. Reading list. What's on your reading list? Me? Yeah. Right now, uh, The Listener. Mm. That's what I have in front of me. What? The Listener. Oh, dang. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to get through my, uh, my convention stuff and the stuff that I got while I was gone. So I have... Uh, I've got two Marissa Pope covers. Oh, nice. So one and three. I believe that's one and three. And then I have When Wind Sweep, which is a different color. So, yeah, um, uh, I'll be reading these. This is on my to-do list after I box up a few things. So it'll be like in between uh, boxing and taking a break and all that good stuff. So uh, Mike Jimmy says, uh, going to be reading issue one tonight. Got myself a booby corn. A booby what? corn? What does it look like this? What is a booby corn? A booby corn. I'm gonna show you. I must know. But since you did, nobody pays. Nobody gets it for free. Oh, Ooh. that's a pretty cover. It's a gorgeous cover. It's a gorgeous cover, and I'm so glad I picked foil. Mm -hmm. I am. Yeah, you know it was. Uh, it kind of reminds me of something that Daphne said that she would be very disappointed if people didn't crack the cover and read the book oh absolutely. you know i mean why why else do we write why else do we create right i mean as a writer of course i want people to read my stories you know and um that would be very frustrating for me i think you know like what then what the hell what the hell are you buying it for good what morning the hell, why the hell would you, buy a book if you're never going to read it you right know, 
or just you know well if you're i mean i get getting some a people coverage well there are stuff, some why people, not get a print well because there are some people that it's not their thing and they just want to be supportive for their friends or to yeah. their friends and i get that and then they're just collectors who like to get the the number ones but you know um for me personally like i i, I read mine i, mm -hmm. I read if, if i bought it for me i'm reading it oh yeah, yeah. speaking of hey we should totally do another bump Ooh, yeah let's let's do it then let me find it let me find it i'm actually working another uh on another bump for him too but oh sweet here we go babes gore and dinosaurs is an active campaign right now on kickstarter and if you are tuning in we have a bunch of links in our show description so go over there and check out the different campaigns and where you can follow some of these creators we'll be right back after this really cool about talking to Dustin about his uh, his book Babes Gore and Dinosaurs. What's that? Is that even though it's going to totally rad comics there there's a storyline and this is not a dig on Jimmy Noble. No, okay? no, no, cuz not not, not at all. It, I'll uh, admit it. I love porn just as much as any dude or well any dude that'll admit he likes porn. Uh <laughs> but but while you do get that naughty in there, you also get the story that we're used to getting, like with Greed and with the listener from Dustin. Right. So it's, like, it's like totally rad your heart, not just random body parts. Well, well, and yeah, with uh, with um, a, a pretty decent story arc that will continue. Very on. decent story arc. A I love the idea arc. of the Metropolis and the ever changing. Well, you've got city. Maya, Eve, and Ricky. Mm -hmm. who are you know like so you've got like you're getting introduced into their world and their story and what they're about and you know hopefully that develops into like further character development which is really kind of cool so um and it's kind of funny and like i was saying before it's not a dig on totally rad comics or jimmy noble we love him you know, in fact, oh, absolutely. We, spent, we spent a good amount of time uh, with him at MegaCon. And in, in fact, he came over to the house and we, we made dinner and all that stuff. We broke bread and um, and he'll even say, he's like, yeah, the dialogue uh, in my books is kind of like oohs and ahs. Oh, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh, he loves, I love it. I love it. I love it. And that's great. I mean, there is, I mean, there's definitely a market for that, you know, but uh, the, the reason behind Dustin bringing this, Babes Born Dinosaurs, to uh, Totally Red Comics is a very personal reason, understandably so, but it, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't go there with just who's and Oz. You know, you will have that too, but there's also a, there's a, a compelling a, story a, arc that's yeah. in there. Character development, really good art, lots of covers that you would expect from a totally rad product. Um, but with uh, Dustin Brunel. And that flair. sweet touch. Yeah. That heart. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there's, there's a lot of heart in, in the story. And so it's kind of trying to find that happy merge right. of the two worlds, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I would say definitely check that out and watch our interview with him 
um, because the, how he feels about his characters, what he's developing comes from not only his head, but his heart. And, uh, and he loves all of the things that he's developing as we all should, um, you know, and, and that kind of speaks to what we were talking about before might not have even been on a region vlog, but, um, writing, writing for trends or writing for yourself. Right. You know, um, I think there, there is a difference between them. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, I mean, cause I write all kinds of things. Like I will write trends because that's part of my job on geek insider is, you know, like what is the here and now, uh, what, what's really cool now might not be really cool a year from now or even six months or two months from now. Right. right. But when, when we're writing for the passion of it, because we have to, because the words are in our head, the characters, um, uh, maybe, and it's, the trends just happen to fall in if they fall into the story. Right, but right. not because of it. Right. No, that, you know? that's that's the evergreen. That's the that's everlasting the, stories. Right. You want something that's, that'll stand the test of time. And, right. And that's really cool. That's where good storytelling comes from. That's where, you know, like our, our folklore um, and, um, and a lot of those legends come from the, the spoken word or the written word that's carried down from generation to generation because it touched you in a way that is compelling and timeless. So, right. and that, that that's the kind of storytelling that I like. And I know that Dustin uh, is of the same mindset, you know, when it comes to storytelling, you want it to be timeless so that Ooh. you can carry it on. Um, so I heard the synopsis of Life on Core number 10 today. It's getting dark. Ooh. Ooh. Hey, Mike, Jimmy, you going to give us a... Spill the tea. Give, Spill the mm -hmm. tea. Give us a little preview, a little sneaky peek. You know, we're, yeah, we're totally NDA, bro. And and Mike, Jimmy says, appear for the babes. Stay for the story. Exactly. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. And it's kind of finding that hybrid to share it with people, you know, because a lot of people are like, Oh, that's a TNA book. It's not. Kind of. No, it's not. It's really not. I, look, even from the eight page preview, it's really not. It, it's not a TNA book. It's just a book that happens to have TNA in it. The, well, okay. That, that is, uh, that is accurate. So, and Mike Jimmy says, we go back to the mountains and, uh, <laughs> Fizerko is saying, come on, we're at four. That's right. But that's really cool that you're already at writing out 10 because art takes time. Trust me. I know I've got stories galore and it's going to take me a hot minute to get the budget together to pay artists to do what I want. I think that hot minute's going to come faster than you're anticipating. We'll see. No, I we'll really see. do. I just I, like I'm the, not way, putting, the way things took off for us. Like it's it's awesome. Dude. I'm not going to put all the eggs in one basket. You no, know, I'm not I, saying or that. all my hope is hinged on one thing or two. Even you know, it's just I, I know. I've been doing this long enough that uh, we were talking about this yesterday. Uh, failure Don't rain is, on my parade, Mary. Failure Look. is familiar. Success is kind of scary. And it's just but like no, when but you're but off on the brink. That hey. out, it's still not success that you're afraid of. It's failing after the success. So it's still a, it's still hmm. fear of failure. Like C was C brought that up to me yesterday. He was like, I hate when people say that. And I'm like, well, why? Because it is outside of our comfort zones. But why are we, we're not afraid to succeed because we have that desire and we all want to. We're afraid right. of failing after the success. Built like. It, it, okay. It, yes and no. But if you don't know what success feels like, then it's still an unknown. I, I can see but, his point. Yeah, I, but I get his point totally. Like, and Mike it, Jimmy says his writers are insane. It's incredible and anxiety-inducing. <laughs> well, I, I think that's great, though, that you have your writers that are on board, who are excited, who have already gotten to the tenth issue. That's really cool. Hey, Mary. Um, hey, what? I love you. I got pee. <laughs> Oh my God. Does that mean we have to go? No, I'll be back. Right. 
<laughs> well, here, what I can do is this. For a 10% discount on your Gemini mailers, make sure that you go to coupon code VOLT10. Uh, that is at GeminiComicSupply.com. That's right. You want to save your comics and ship them safely in Gemini mailers. And you can get a 10% discount by using coupon code VOLT10. V-O-L-T. One zero, and that is courtesy of Indie Volt. Thank you to Barry and Grant, uh, which, by the way, we are simulcasting to Indie Volt, and they are finally monetized. So you can do super chats over there. That's right. Tip the shows while you're tuning in. That would be great. I'm sure they would appreciate it. Uh, we are also simulcasting to Geek Insider, Comics More New Jersey, as well as Rage and ABC. Hit the button. I monologued as much as I possibly could with that card, and Nita is not back. What are you doing, Nita? Take care of that bladder, man. Dude, I drank I drank too much coffee. I didn't even dry my hands. Okay. <laughs> I didn't even zip my pants, but we're not even going to talk about that. I'm back. Hey, you know, I, I'm still wearing my Wonder Woman pajama bottoms. Yeah. I ain't wearing pants. I'm wearing them. They're just unbuttoning and unzipped because I was, like, doing the mad dash. Wash your hands. Get back in the chair. Like, I drank way too much coffee this morning. Yeah, so uh, so on my to-read list, and, and let me got, let me know what you guys are reading also. Uh, I'm kind of interested to know whether it's uh, prose, whether it's comics, or whether you're just busy writing your own. That would be awesome. Let us know. Uh, and drop those links in Little Bastard promos, because that's, uh, that's how we're spending our day. Like, every morning, we try and check it, and then we're going to share that out to our social media. But I've got the list. I mean, look at this. This is a beautiful That is cover. gorgeous. I think that's my favorite. Like, I would this, tattoo that on my body. I think this is one of my favorite Marissa Pope covers. Um, I would then, totally tattoo that yeah, on my so body. Yeah, so I've got, I've got three books on my on my list right now. Plus, I've got Greed. Greed looks like a fun book that I haven't read. Yeah, Greed is going to be yeah. awesome. So so there's that. She loved and, it. Um, yeah, so after this, I'm packing books so that it can go out in tomorrow's mail, and that's finally off my desk, thank goodness. <laughs> and those those are, here, let me show you really quick. All right, so what I did with this was because they are my book. Look at that. Ta -da -da. I've got some reviews in the back and all that fun stuff. And the Kickstarter exclusive is limited to 100 copies. Meredith Logroom. Yes. Book two has to have another quote on the back. What's that? I want my quote on there. This bitch is twisted. Yeah. <laughs> so what I did was, you can see, like, um, limited edition. This is uh, for Kickstarter only because on the back of it has the acknowledgments of all the people who supported my campaign when I crowdfunded. So I've got spe special Kickstarter acknowledgments. But uh, it's also got the eight pages, the first eight pages of the comic book that I'm developing right now. Um, yeah. Number two. Number, number two. two. Number, number one two. Go, went to my husband. Um, so it's got the, it's got the um, pencils of the first eight pages of The Dying. So that is a horror comic that I'm working on. And it's got, I, I need to pay for like 14 more pages of art. Which is going to take a hot minute. You know why? Because Uncle Sam decided, um, yeah, twelve hundred of your tax return is not uh, not coming to you for whatever reason. I have no idea why, but there goes that. So I've got to hustle. I gotta I gotta pay for art. I gotta find ways to do it. What, what are you doing, Nita? Smelling you. <laughs> I didn't rub it on my armpits or you anything. You should like have. That. It would have felt more personal. <laughs> It's like pull out a piece of hair. There's some DNA with your book. Be like, <laughs> yes, yes, no, no, yes. <laughs> so yeah, that's limited to a hundred, and then uh, the next edition will be up on Amazon. So that should be available worldwide, which was part of the reason why I did not have the Kickstarter open to shipping worldwide because i knew it was eventually going to go to amazon um because yep. um 
That's because Brian thing. shipping prices are just like ridiculous and stuff like that. However, I would. I mean, if, if you guys are really interested, uh, I mean, basically, it, it, you know, book plus shipping to get an exclusive copy. I still have extra copies of that, you know, set aside that that didn't sell. I just wanted to. I like the number 100. It's a nice even number. You're pretty damn close to that anyway, weren't you? <clears throat> kind of, yeah. Yeah, it was pretty close. So that's that's limited. It, what what uh, what surprised me was that I had more people who wanted the physical copy than the PDF. That kind of surprised me. And I was just like, pure profit? No, you guys had to get the book. <laughs> you gave straight I wanted the book. I am so grateful for that. Honestly, it was really cool to open up the box. And I mean, there are a couple of them that have uh, the, the covers were a little bit bent because of how they packed them. It wasn't the great packing job from, from the printer, but it is what it is. Uh, and those copies are going to go to family because they didn't back my Kickstarter. So I'm like, here, Ooh. take that one. Ah. <laughs> So that's uh, that's about it. The Compendium of Dread Volume 1 was intended to be a collaboration with a lot of other uh, a lot of other writers and that fell apart. And it took a couple of years to put it together and just say finally, you know what? I'm ready to print this sucker. Uh, with or without you and it was without them because they all disappeared. You know, they didn't, they were really excited about the call to action, but when it came time to deliver, not one, not one delivered a story. So it's, it's a book of all of my stories and uh, microfiction. So like the microfiction ones, uh, some of them were like as short as like those, none, those none uh, word. six word stories, you know, and what I did was I took them and I, made them into 99 words. So those one page stories, literally 99 words, you can count them each. That was fun to do. It's kind of a challenge within a challenge. <clears throat> so Mike Jimmy says, it's always fun in games until actual work comes into play, right? Um, I'm hoping to do a book too. I'm hoping to do a book too. I've got a new network of writers and friends who say that they're excited about working together. And so we'll see. We'll see what happens because I am going to have a tight deadline and make it happen with or without you guys. I'd rather work with you guys because that sounds like fun. It does. <laughs> Nita, are you going to write a story? I told you a soft yes. A soft yes. Mm. Very soft. I know where you are. You're in here every day with me. <laughs> and I will hound you, woman. I will hound you. But, but um, for you. Oh, God, I'm going to throw up. Mm. Yeah. What are you doing? I, I, did, I took some more of that oil because I like the way it makes me feel, uh -huh. but I don't like the way it tastes. It's like greasy bong water. I told, I told you, like, throw it on a cookie or something. I don't want to eat a cookie. That's the whole point in going with CBD instead of THC because the CBD has the same positive yeah, but if it tastes, tastes without but the if monkeys, it tastes nasty. without the, it does. It tastes awful. Like I'm not even gonna lie, but I love it. Like seriously, I'd buy it again and I'd suffer through it every fucking time because I swear to God, Meredith, it's weird. I don't feel high. But all the other, the things that go along with the fucking high when I just smoke or eat an edible, uh, the relaxation, it, it, it keeps me calmer. It, I'm, I'm mellowed out, but I can still focus. Whereas like if I'm smoking weed, I'll be like mellow and calm and I'll be sitting here working with you and I'll be like, damn, I wonder what would happen <laughs> if, if a hedgehog jacked off on a rainbow or some weird, <laughs> just stupid shit. Or look out the window and it's like, what is that fucking lizard doing out there? <laughs> it, it, it's like, you know? It, it, but with this, it's it's cool. So now I've found my daytime cure and I'm going to stay with my nighttime because CBD oil does cost a pretty fucking penny if you're getting good shit. Yeah. If you're getting good quality, you're going to look to pay $100 for a 30 milliliter bottle. Um, 
I wouldn't trust that generic shit you get in all the head shops or whatever, but this yeah. Mount Push stuff is pretty, it, it's, it's good stuff. Yeah. It works. It, it works. I would definitely rather see about going with their gummy line because, uh, like I said, I'm not a fan of the taste, but the taste is not going to deter me from not using the product. But it doesn't make you feel like, uh, but I don't feel like I'm not stupid. It's, it's, it's the, all the positive stuff without the stupid. Like, I'm but not, not like a zombie, not, no, not like no, listless no. or like you don't feel like well, doing anything. I did a full dropper and it did kind of, it kind of made me want to go to sleep for a little bit. So mm -hmm. I, I have to, I have to find my, my, my dosage. Mm -hmm. and I think that's somewhere between a quarter and a half a dropper. But I've noticed okay. the full effects last me about, about two hours. So yeah, um, and a quarter dropper a couple times a day might might be what I'm looking for. And cool. then in the evenings, the edibles, because we can get stupid then and watch movies. But right now I need to focus. <laughs> right, right. And I can't do that if I'm worried about the lizard outside. <laughs> I I don't have, I, I get those, uh, I get the paranoia whenever I've smoked. And it doesn't I'll matter. I'll do that too. It doesn't matter which uh, strain it is, because I, I have no idea. Usually it's like a friend who used to like pass a joint or whatever, or say, hey, take a hit off of this. Right? And I'm like, um, OK. And the next thing I know is like, what's that? Do you know I'm high? Oh, my God. You know, and it's like, no. It's oh, my God, him. you're obnoxious. <laughs> I'm gonna have to bring you some good weed, Meredith. I'm gonna have to show you what a. I won't what, do. I won't do. And and it's kind of funny too. I will fucking be like, here, Meredith. You want I don't know. Gummy bear. And I don't know like, if it's okay. hereditary. I don't know if it's hereditary because the the first time that I found out that my parents had tried pot, um, I was shocked. Um, and then they told me, both of them told me, it's like, no, nah, I don't do it because it makes me paranoid. And it's just like, oh my god, me too. And they looked at me and they were like, you tried pot? And it was just like, yes. Like I didn't really, I never lied to him. <laughs> like, no, you just have to have the right strain or the right combo. I'm telling you. I don't you. know. I don't know. I'm it's just, you. you know, uh, that's why. You better like, never I take candy from me again because I am going to dose you, Meredith. <laughs> I had the tincture and I was like, I'm, I know I'm never going to use this. That's why but I gave it to you. No, this is totally different. This would not make you paranoid at all. This is straight up cannabinoids. This is like. But there, I wouldn't the, even know. The THC I wouldn't even, level is so low on this; it's not even going to register on a drug test. But I wouldn't even know. Like, why would I even use it for migraines, for anxiety, for whatever? Mm -hmm. Like, it, this is this is the the snake oil without being, but but legit. Like, it's the cure all. Like, I'm serious. It's good for anxiety. It's good for depression. Uh, it, it, it's good. Like, if you. Combine well, because I know that you've done the research on it because, yeah, because you you use it because of anxiety and things like right, that. Right, right. And it, it, it's so much better than self-medicate. Okay, like, here's the deal. Like, I'm going to say something that's completely controversial. I, I believe that marijuana makes me a better mother. Mm -hmm. In that respect, I mean that I, I have so much anxiety and because I have post-traumatic stress and things like that, I, I get on edge real easy. Mm -hmm. um, but when I have cannabis, it's I'm not the same. I'm more relaxed. I'm, I'm more mellow. The kids more patient. I'm more patient with the kids. Uh, but the problem with it comes in when we're homeschooling. Like I was telling you earlier today, when it's THC that I'm using to self-medicate, the difference is, is while I'm more patient and calm, I'm having a hard, like, here we go. Mike Jimmy's going to laugh at this one. Here we go. I'm trying to teach you long division, but I'm still worried about that fucking lizard outside my window. Did the little guy eat? Is he hungry? Is he caught between the screen or does he want to get out on that tree? Or is that his home? If I go and relocate him, am I taking him away from his family? Like, what's up with that dude? I don't know his story. But with this, I'm going to focus on the long division and still be calm. It just, like, it, it, and oh he's, my he's God. right. Like, this CBD oil is very, very good for anti-paranoia. It has a very calming effect. That's you know. funny. That's funny. So now, now you need a story about the lizard. Mm. We need a lizard story, Anita. Make it mm. happen. Oh my God, that has to be done. 
You totally have to do it. <laughs> I want the lizard story. Oh my god! I'm right, Mike, Jimmy. Give me we need the lizard here. story. <laughs> I'm telling you, I I need that in my I need that in my life. I'm That's like air here. to me right now. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. All right. Well, we got to get out of here, you guys. Thank you for tuning in. And <laughs> hey, instead of throwing our regular uh, outro today, yeah, we did the Gemini mailer, right? I did the Gemini mailer. Okay, that was when I went to the bathroom. Okay, let's run Amy Hale's commercial because, like, okay. her and her old man, they 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 both ended up with COVID and medical expenses and things are tight and whatever. And mm -hmm. I just I'm like showing her a little love. All right. Well, Amy Hale has got a bunch of books. They're out on Amazon and I need to share the link, but here is her bump. Here you go. The uh, last time I heard, um, John is out of the hospital yeah. and back home, so we're really happy to see that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, those bills just piled up. It wasn't so much the hospital, it was the medication. Right. So, um, and that long-term effect stuff there. So if you've got the time, the money, and the interest, dude, head over there and show her some love. Show her some love, uh, buy a book, leave a review. Reviews are very helpful for people, especially on Amazon. And uh, Mike Jimmy says, I will hear the lizard story someday. No, Absolutely. No. He says, bring us the lizard. Nita, Yo. make it happen. Mm. I have to have it. I have to have that in my life. That was the extent of the story. Like, I'm going to make you like what? I'll, I, I know what I'll do. I'll make you a strip. You going to put it on uh, Webtoons or something like that? No, fuck all that. That's going to be an actually just right I want. I want a lizard story. I think you can make it happen. Like a whole floppy on this lizard story. Oh my god! Totally. You know, I don't have totally time for shit. Happen. We have stuff to do. We have. Uh, wait, hey, you know on. what? If you if you actually made that and had art for it, oh my god, I would totally throw that up on a. Who's Twitter. gonna art my lizard story? Artists are expensive, <laughs> Meredith. You're married to one. My throat. He would totally do a. It. He would totally do a lizard story. Because it's cute. It's adorable. Ah, my Jimmy says no balls. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Do oh, it. Oh my God. Get me out of here. I need it in my life. Really. I'm, I'm going to work on her. You need in your life. You need to be backing and boarding and packing. That's what you need to be doing in your life so we can get to work. <sighs> Fine. All right, you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. Stay productive. Be kind. Hit the button. And Nita. Yep. Final words. Throw my dudes. We're out of here. Bye.